Hello and welcome to My Own Worst Enemy. If you remember, a while back I did a how-to video on how I apply stickers to block war games, and I wanted to do another video, another how-to video, on how I sleeve my cards. And so I've got uh, Conquest and Consequences out, and we're going to be using that as our example. Clearly I have not sleeved these yet. I'm going to show you how I do it though. Now why do you sleeve cards? Why do I sleeve my games? If you play a game a lot, and you know, Triumph and Tragedy is the game I like, I like a lot, Con Conquest and Consequence, I'm pretty sure I'm going to like this one a lot. If you play a game a lot and you handle these cards and you don't sleeve them, over time, I don't care how careful you're going to be, these things are going to develop telltale signs on some of the cards as to what they are. So for instance, this card, what is this? Mongolia, it's a Fall Command E7 and a British Empire. If I don't sleeve these cards and you, you continue to play the game over and over, you're going to get a crease, you're going to get a wear mark, you're going to get something on the back of this card, the front of this card that causes it, you see it on the back, a scrape, a Coca-Cola spill, I don't care what, you're going to get something on that card. And what's going to happen is when you're playing a game and you look over and you see that card on top of the deck or you see it in your opponent's hand and you see that bent corner or you see that scratch, you're going to know Wait a minute, I know that card is the Mongolia, the Fall Command D7 British Empire card, so I know exactly what that card is in, your, in the opponent's hand. I hate that. I hate it, I hate it, I hate it, I hate it. <laughs> the solution is to sleeve your cards. When I first started sleeving cards, I bought these, and this is just one brand that I bought. There's several brands of card sleeves out there, but this is just a standard sized clear, both sides clear card sleeves. What that means is, I'll pull one of these out here. It's clear on both sides. So you can see right through that. It's hard to tell maybe on the camera. If you put it in the card, or put the card in it, I should say. So we'll do that. This one fits really nice and tight. Sometimes they don't. It's the perfect size for these games. And I believe that it said it was meant for standard size playing cards. It does. So there it says for standard size. Oh, if it focuses, but I'm not going to cooperate here, probably because it's shiny. But anyway, that's standard size, fits nicely, so you can see the, uh, the card there is standard size. So you can see the front and the back really clear. No issues with that. The problem though is this, it's really smooth, really slick. So these, these, they're being clear on both sides. Super, super clear. It's not the end of the world if you use a sleeve that's totally clear on both sides, because what happens is, over time, as you use these cards and they're rubbing against each other in the deck or in your hand, they will wear and they will not be as slick and they'll stack a little bit better. But I'm going to show you a couple of things that will make the cards stick together even more. One of the complaints I hear from people about why they don't like to sleeve their cards is because, well, it makes the deck fall over and it makes them too slick and you can't stack them. But I'm going to show you something that I've learned that helps prevent that. Don't use these clear sleeves that are clear on both sides. What you should use and what I use are sleeves that are clear on one side and matte on the other. And this is the exact brand that I use, these Dragon Shields. You can see at the top that there's a hundred standard size card sleeves in this box. Let's open one up here and pull it out. So this looks a little different. You'll note that it's not as clear as the other one. Let me grab the other one. Doesn't look as clear anyway. You can see there's a little bit of almost like haze on this one. See how it's blurry over the, the box there. This one's super clear. But it's not a problem when you put a card in it. So what I do, and this is a card deck that has a back to it. So all the cards have the same back. The fronts are different, of course. So what I do, one side of this sleeve is matte, has a matte a rough finish to it. The other is clear. And so I'll Take the back of the card and make that the matte side. So that's the back side. So you put that card in and again, so there's the card, the side you want to read is nice and clear. And the back is two actually, so that's the matte side. And you can tell that's nice and clear. And if you've watched my videos, you know that uh, you've seen these cards and they're actually sleeved with this card sleeve. Now the thing about the matte side is if I put it in backwards, maybe that's your preference, I don't know. It's still very readable. So that's the matte side again. You can read that really clear. But like I said, I do prefer to have the, the matte side on the back of the card deck. That's just me. That is the, this is the brand that I use. I highly recommend it, the Dragon Shield. And this is how they look when they're sleeved. 
These boxes aren't that expensive. I, I just bought some of these at Origins actually and got a pretty good deal. It was didn't have to pay shipping because I got them there on site. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sleeve these cards. I'm going to sleeve all 55. This is the uh, this is the action deck. So there's 55. There's 55 investment cards over there too. What I'm going to do is I'm going to sleeve the this entire deck, and I'm going to come back and show you one extra step that will make these cards a lot less likely to slip when they're stacked. When we come back, I will I will show you what the next step is. All right, I'm back. So I have put sleeves on both the action deck and the investment deck, and they are <laughs> very, very loose. This, understandably, is one of the complaints people have about sleeving your cards. And let me move this deck out of the way, and we'll just deal with one for now. Yeah, so this, this is what happens. So you put these things in the sleeves. The deck becomes considerably thicker. And when you stack the deck, so if we were playing a game, the con Conquest and Consequence, this would be the action deck. You would put this out, and that's what would happen. You would start seeing that happen. You're holding these. See, I can't even pick the deck up because it slides and it just goes everywhere. Now, what I do that will prevent that, let me show you. Let me stack these up. What I used to do, actually, is I used to take really heavy books or war games that are heavy and just stack them on these cards and weight them down for a few days. And that does work, but it's really hard to do because you've got to center the deck under the boxes or the books or whatever you're using. So it turns out to be a real pain. But what I've discovered, I've got two of these blocks. Now, what these blocks are, this any flat pieces of wood, this is just an old pre-laminated shelf that I had that I cut these out of. I wanted this the uh, surface to be smooth for these cards. And one of these Quick Grips, I think Vice Grip, yeah, Vice Grips makes these. These are really old. I've had these for years, many, many years, probably decades, honestly. But these are just the, you can buy these at any hardware store, these Quick Grip Vice Grips. So what I do, take your cards, and I'm going to grab, I really need to remake these. These are just kind of quick one day. I need to make them smoother and nicer looking. I mean, they work fine. You could probably use something else, but this is just what I chose. Take your cards, put them between, sandwich them between these blocks, best you can. You don't have to be exact, but I like to try to be exact <laughs> just because that's the way I am. Get them, you know, nice and centered all the way down, best you can, like I said. That's probably good right there. Just make sure that there's not too much overhang and they're centered really good on those blocks. Then take your grips, your vice grips, and let's see, I got, yep, these are just about right. Center it, kind of clamp down just a little bit. And again, one last check to get all the cards. Make sure it's centered. Looks like I need to drop this down just a little bit so you can see that it's So let's see if we can get that on camera. So I'm just kind of centered, maybe not. Tighten it. Make sure, again, that everything's all nice and flat. So that looks pretty good. I haven't tightened anything yet. Now tighten. So take your grip and just cinch down best you can. And hard as you can. These things, I don't, I've never had one break and they work really good. Now those cards are in there tight. So they're not, they're not going to come out. What you do now, set this aside for, I'm going to say two to three days. I try to go three days and maybe come back. You don't have to do this, but what I like to do is maybe the next day, if I do this today, tomorrow I'll come back and maybe cinch this down again. Uh, the next day, do the same thing. Just once in a while, tighten it, retighten it. Because that's going to compress this deck. And let me grab the other deck. What did I do with it here? This is the other deck, which is not compressed. It's hard to see that, but you can see how much it's compressed that deck already. That's what's going to happen when you put it in this, this vice grip. It's just going to cinch that down and, and grip it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to let this go for, let's let it go for three days. And uh, through the magic of time compression, I'll come back in three days. I won't do the other deck. I will just do this one deck. And when we come back in three days, I'm going to show you how this deck looks. You saw how it looked before, before I did this. It was sliding everywhere. When we come back, I will show you how this deck will stand up just fine on its own 
with uh, not being knocked over or anything for playing a game. So we will stop the video here and uh, we will come back in three days. All right, we are back. Three days have elapsed. That was really fast, wasn't it? But I assure you, three days have gone by. <laughs> this is the vice grips with the cards I put in there. I cinched these downs, and you know, after day one, like I said, I kind of just re put more pressure on it, just checked it. Day two, I did the same thing, and even the beginning of day three, I did the same thing. So I kept kind of cranking down on this just a little bit. There's not a whole lot. Once you crank it down, though, there's really not a whole lot more you can. It did move maybe a little bit during those three days. But let's go ahead and pop this now, and I will show you what it did. Okay, so we're going to remove the blocks. Okay, set those aside. So here we go. Here are the cards. They may not look different on the camera there, but I'm going to set those down and look. Pounding the table. Nothing's moving. Now, just for comparison's sake, if you remember, I had these cards, which I said I would not put in the vice grip, and I didn't. So this is the cards that I... <laughs> these are the cards that did not get cinched down yet. They will. But for now, you can see, and I'm going to turn these on the side so that maybe we can do a little comparison. I'm kidding myself thinking those are going to stay there. Let's see if this will show up on camera. You can see just how much, and even if I squeeze these with my fingers, they still don't go down like this. These are not going anywhere. They are compressed. They are, I can take these cards. I can bump them. I mean, yeah, you can knock one off like that, but they're not really moving. So there you go. So that works. That keeps your decks from moving during the game. It works out great. You pick one off, you pick two off, and you know, it doesn't go anywhere. You try that here, you pick one off, you pick two off, you pick three off, and then boom, here, no. These are not going anywhere. So that kind of takes care of the complaint that people have about, oh, I don't want to sleeve my cards because they get like this where you can't control them. Oh well, yeah, if you don't, and I just did that myself, that wasn't, <laughs> that wasn't the fact that the cards are slippery. You can still knock a deck of cards over with your hands. So let me get these back up. Kind of like when you knock a stack of counters over. You're not going to completely eliminate knocking cards over if you're not careful. But you know, you can split this deck. You have your, your cards in your hand. They're easy to slide through. Uh, you're not going to drop them unless you make a mistake like I did. And just things will happen where you, you will drop stuff eventually. But what I'm trying to tell you is those cards are not going anywhere. And you can bump the table. See, these, see how these move and those don't move? That's why you want to use the vice grips, compress those things for two to three days, and they're fine. They're not going anywhere. They're perfectly okay to use. And this deck, this Conquest and Consequence deck, I believe is 55 cards, so it's a standard card deck. And yeah, that's it. Protected. You're not going to get those telltale signs. The worst thing that may happen, you may in shuffling these, and these do shuffle. Let me get these out of the way because they're just making a mess. These do shuffle easily. So you split the deck. And I like to keep the deck facing the same way. So you have the tops or the tops, con conquest and consequence at the top of both. And just, there you go. Shuffle the deck. It's easy to do. I think it's even easier with these sleeves on because it is just a little bit slicker than just having the paper card. But yeah, they're easy to shuffle. There's 55 cards there. I think it's 55. I know there's 55 in Triumph and Tragedy, so I'm assuming there's 55 here. It looks like the same size deck. There you go. They're protected. You're not, you're not going to get greasy fingerprints on these things. Uh, if you do, for some reason, get a stain on this, you re-sleeve the card, right? You just pull the card out of the sleeve that's damaged or stained and stick, the, stick it in a new sleeve and go. These sleeves are cheap. They are inexpensive. I don't know why you would spend... Uh, last time I looked, this game, Conquest and Consequence, was selling for over $100 at GMT. Why would you invest that much in a game and not protect its components? Why would you not sleeve your cards? I don't get it. I like doing it. I mean, like I said, if you're only going to buy it, if you buy a game like this and you're going to play it once, maybe you don't need to sleeve your cards. But if you're going to buy a game, play it and enjoy it over and over and over, especially if you're playing with friends, you have a group, sleeve the cards. You're going to protect them. They're going to last longer. All right, so that's it. I just wanted to have people ask me before, you know, how, what brand of, 
sleeves I use, how do I do it? So this video hopefully will help you to get some sleeves on your cards, protect your games, and let, make them last longer. You want these to be around for a long, long time. And finally, I wanna give you one last tip, and that is when I put these cards back in the box, I have, I bought a bulk of these things off of Amazon. These are, yeah, they're made in China, so you know they're cheap. These are fabric hair ties, and so what they are is just that. They are elastic, they're made out of fabric. I don't know if you can see that on the camera there. Very, very nice fabric, so not rubber bands. Do not use rubber bands on your cards, people. Use something like this, a fabric that's gonna protect the card and not decrode and, and mess up the cards. So yeah, just simply use these hair ties, put them in the, and it keeps them together when you're moving around and transporting your game or storing it on the shelf. You pull it back out and the cards are there. And these things about these hair ties is you could, if you need to split the deck, which I've had to do with some games because they're not, the boxes are too thin. They need to be three inch and not two inch. You can double wrap these, make it really tight. And those cards are gonna stay together in the box. So just a tip. Another little tip there to help you store your cards. All right, that's it. A quick how-to video. I hope this has helped. If it did, please hit the like button. Subscribe if you haven't. And uh, thank you for watching, and I'll see you back here next time.